Hello, welcome to part three. We are on the canals, we are on the Toth Path. We ended part two in Camden, the famous bridge back there. I'm standing on another famous bridge. This is called Dead Dog's Hole and a secret catacomb of tunnels and rivers that go underneath the market, which used to be the horse stables in there where the horses used to rest. If you've got a boat, go in there, but don't tell anyone, shh, because it's a secret. Anyway, we're heading west. If watching canal videos makes you want to go on a canal boat itself, then one of the easiest ways to do it in London is to use one of the two boat services that take people back and forth between Little Venice and Camden. Here's one of the services here. But did you know there wouldn't be a canal through London had the Central Electricity Generating Board, this CEGB, not come along in the 1970s and saved them? I bet you've never seen these caution high voltage cables. These are all along the canal. Since the canals fell into disrepair after the Second World War, there was always talk of filling them in and turning them into roads. But when the company needed to expand the national grid, they installed 400 kilovolt cables along their length as the towpath was a perfect place to do this. A straight, landscaped piece of land. As a bonus, they also used the water from the canal to cool the very hot cables, which is why there are numerous pumping stations along the way. This is the Southampton Bridge cooling station, one of many cooling stations along the canal, run and maintained by the National Grid, saviours of the canal. As the trains rumble overhead, that one's going into Euston. In 1837, that was the London to Birmingham Railway though, and trains had a hard time getting up the incline out of Euston Station, which is why this part of the canal, where the railway meets the water, this door here, a secret door, lets you look into something that I like to call Stevenson's vaults. Steam winches were built by the canal here, at the top of the incline leading out of the station, to haul the carriages one mile up to where they were then attached to locomotives for onward travel. The empty vaults that housed the boilers and winding gear for the seven years that this was an operation are down this secret passageway. Next up, we find a bit of disused and filled in canal. So here's a secret which isn't so much of a secret nowadays, more and more people are starting to know about this. The Feng Shang floating Chinese restaurant, the only place where you can supposedly, in a canal boat, go up and get your food passed out onto your boat. If you had a boat, then you should try that. Anyway, this, though, is at the start of the Cumberland Basin. And what, you may ask, is the Cumberland Basin? This is the Cumberland Basin. Well, what's left of it? You see, in the same way that the underground has its abandoned tube stations, London has its abandoned canals. And this bridge on Gloucester Gate, Euston is that way, Camden is that way, and we just come from the Chinese restaurant up there, goes over what was once a canal. As you can see now, it's a ditch that's filled in. That's a car park. And basically, this was the Cumberland Spur that went all the way down to Euston Station fell into disuse though, just before the war. And after the war, it got clogged up and they actually filled it in with rubble from houses that were destroyed in the Blitz. And they filled in this canal up to the point where the Chinese restaurant is now. But I like the fact there's a bridge here over nothing. Next up, it was time to see the animals. But did you know that you can get there by boat? So we're walking along the top of Regent's Park. There's a bridge back there and there's a bridge over there. And those are the way into ZSL London Zoo. Yes, the zoo is over there. But the cooler way to get into the zoo is in the summer months to get a ticket which lets you ride up on a boat. And they've got their own landing platform here. You can get into the zoo from the canal. That's cool. Part of the zoo is even on the other side of the canal. Here on the north side of the water, you can get a close-up look for free of the aviary, where you can see many species of exotic birds. The canal is a very peaceful place. Always walk slowly, travel slowly, and sometimes just stop and sit on a bench and just watch nothing much happen pass by. It's beautiful to think that you're in the heart of London and there is this canal. But we are by something historic, almost famous in uh, London canal terms, right here. We're at the Macclesfield Bridge, which in canal terms, amongst the boaters, is known as Blowout Bridge, because this bridge once blew up completely. The year is 1874. Five boats are coming in a convoy down from the Midlands towards London. One of them is carrying explosives. And unfortunately, those explosives exploded. Local people nearby thought it was an earthquake. Three people died. The keel of the boat flew up into the air and landed 300 meters away, all because this boat exploded. And when they rebuilt the bridge within five days, very fast, because that's how important the canal was for trade, something very interesting happened. With here, on the pillars, you can see that there are grooves cut into the side of the, of the pillars where guide ropes have over the years worn away channels. But what about this? Around this side, there are also grooves here because what they did is that when they put back this pillar, they turned it round, making that the smooth side. So these are the grooves that were originally here and post blowing up 
These are the grooves which have then worn away over time. Next, you'll pass the Listen Grove moorings and an oddity of the canal and that there are towpaths on both sides here. You'll then also see what's known as the Upside Down House, real name the Canal House. It's the only property that straddles the Regent's Canal. That's the London water bus. It goes as a shuttle between Little Venice, which is where we're heading to, and Camden that way. And it's just entering the Maida Hill Tunnel. It's not as long as the Islington Tunnel that we did in the previous video, but it's the second tunnel on the part of the Regent's that you can't walk through. There's the slightly shorter air tunnel, which you can walk through, except the towpath is closed at the moment for maintenance. That side, Lisson Grove moorings. This side, Blonfield Road moorings. Lots of canal boats. Suddenly got very green, very pretty, and we're heading for the even prettier Little Venice. Little Venice is the westernmost point of the Regent's Canal, and it's here that it meets the Grand Union and the spur down to the Paddington Basin. It gets its name from poet Robert Browning, who lived nearby after moving back from Italy, and referred to the area by the name that we know it now. And the triangular shape of water here is still known as Browning's Pool. The Canal and River Trust, who look after the canals in London, also have their office here. And to wrap up this video, there's one more place out west that I need to take you to. So hello and welcome to the canal. Okay, I know what you're thinking, this isn't the canal. This looks like traffic. It is traffic. If I get my camera up, you'll see that is the North Circular. And there's my cameraman, Matt. Give me a wave, Matt. I'm actually standing on an aqueduct over the North Circular. Come up and join me. Thanks for joining us. We're on the aqueduct across the top of the A406, the North Circular. Is this London's only aqueduct? No, it's not. If you know where the others are, there's more than one, put them down in the comments below. So you've got one channel of water here, a little island. I've always wanted to get out to that island and another channel of water over there. We know this about this. This was built in the 1990s. It replaced a former aqueduct, which actually the IRA tried to bomb in the 1960s. But when they did this one, they actually built the new aqueduct to the side. They blocked off the canal on either side, let the water drain down into the River Brent, which is just over there, and then slid the new one into place. And they did that in a four day long Easter weekend. It's kind of cool. I mentioned the River Brent, that's because, yep, the canal comes along. Not only does the canal go over the road, it also goes over the water. You've got water going over the water with the River Brent over there. So we're leaving behind Regent's Park, the Regent's and the nice bit of the canal down there. It becomes a little bit more industrial shall we say as we head further west but there's still some really cool things to see so subscribe and join us for part four on the canals